Hey guys, it's your girl Deidre Ashante, and I'm back in the studio. And I have this wonderful, amazing man, Mr. Zario. Oh my God, I'm so excited to have you here. You know, you're pretty amazing. You think so? Yes, praise I've been God doing. I, I, yes, praise and praise. I've been doing all of my research, and I've, I've listened to a few a few things. Would you introduce yourself to my audience? Tell us what you do. I am Zacharias H. Muhammad, aka Zario. I am a servant of the community and a servant of God. I believe in helping my community and also I'm a singer and songwriter and also just a well-rounded entertainer, I would say. Okay, so when you say entertainer, how long, how long have you been in the entertainment business? Because that's 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 a whole job in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have when did how long have you been doing that? Uh, professionally when I turned 15 years old and I had a uh, my vocal coach, shout out to Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. She trained me and um, you know, vocally oh. and I was around the likes of those that were working with Keith Sweat and Bobby mm -hmm. Bella too and um Ronnie DeVoe, New no Edition, people like that. Okay, so how is that how would you classify your sound? Um, if you were to classify it. A lot of people say I sound like from a mixture of Brahmin Knight, Usher, you know, people like that. Okay, well, just hold on to that. I'm gonna put you on the spot in a minute, <laughs> but just just be thinking of what you're gonna say to me. All right, okay. So when you say how, one of the things when I researched you and I looked up your page, music was was way up high, heavy in your heart, and so was God, but also the community. Where did your love and passion for other people and community? Where does that come from? First, I gotta give all credit and praise to God. Um, I'm a student of the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan. And hearing that from a young age, you know, and actually hearing about the condition of our people, you know, rather regardless of our title or what, where we come from, we as a people suffer in America. Mm -hmm. And that suffering has to be addressed properly. And, um, you know, I've been under that influence and watching my grandmother. She had um, over 26 births mm -hmm. and 19 children, and she stayed in a four bedroom apartment. You know, so four bedroom apartment. Four bedroom apartment. So one. she would always feed the community. She would feed Close. some of the um, homeless in the area. She would feed everybody. Everybody was open arms. So she was that servant type of woman. And that, to me, that's that community. Absolutely. That's what community is all about. And I don't care who, I don't care who it is. I feel like um, whatever religion, whatever belief you are, Absolutely. there should be a love and passion for people that look like you. Absolutely. There should be a, a, a something inside of you that wants to see people in a better place. Absolutely. And that, I mean, I think it's just a part of being human. Yeah. And, and I think we've lost a certain bit of that humanness. So how, how many hours a week do you spend just building the community? Because when I looked on your page, I was like, <laughs> There you go again. There you go again. There you go again. <laughs> How many hours a week do you devote to that? I, I can't even calculate the hours. Mm. You know, I was trained under my mentor. We spent sometimes 16, 18, 20 hours a day, mm. seven days a week trying to heal and fix the problems that exist in our community. So how? what is it like when people don't receive you? When those ones, how do you deal with it when it's those ones you're trying and you're trying and, and you see something in them that they don't even see in themselves? Yeah. Um, that's a twofold answer to that question. My teacher told, them, told me, just tell them. Mm. Just tell them the yeah. truth and let it fall where it may. Although there are some that have come and joined the process of being better. Mm -hmm. And in that process, sometimes they slip, sometimes they fall. But like I was reading something earlier today that it kind of resonated with in my spirit that look past their faults mm. and see their need. And you keep pulling on the greatness that is inside of us. Each and every one of us has God inside of us. But it's just buried under the rubbish under of this the hurt pain and the pain, pain and, of, the and the disappointment and the... of this world. Mm. So knowing that we're greater than this world, but we just need the right type of uh, guidance and mm. the right type of understanding, we got to keep pulling on what we know that's best for our people. So, so what are some things that you, you do? Um, well, we have a, a manhood training program that we do every Saturday morning uh -huh. at 6 a.m. And where is that? How do they connect with that? That's on 17 Jesse Hill Junior Drive. That's in Northeast Atlanta. Uh -huh. um, they can connect with that by simply going to the page 360 We Got. That's 360 We Got on Instagram. Also the 1000 Men and Women Inc.org. Mm. They can go to that and also rebuildwebuild.com. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. No reason. 
no reason why you can't connect to a positive brother. Everybody, uh, I work in the heart of um, a lot of turmoil right on Peach Tree. And I always hear the young brothers say, well, we don't have anybody to look up to. We don't have anyone to connect with. So I commend you for being that person and being right there in the trenches and willing to help. So I, appl I applaud you for that. Uh, what do you see musically for Zaria? I see everything that I do, every business that I operate and own, it's all about the upliftment of us as a people and humanity. Mm. So everything I do from the fashion to the music to the security company that we have, the different businesses that we have, it's all about getting someone employment, mm -hmm. but also having an environment where it's safe and it's decent and it's peaceful mm. that you can see their lives will grow mm -hmm. and expound on. So at the end of the day, everything I do is not just about making money, mm -hmm. but you have to find a profit because it is business. Right, because we, we, we have to eat. Absolutely. That's so, a reality. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with musically, musically, it's just about putting out positive vibes, you know what I mean, riding that wave of positivity, mm -hmm. entering into the hearts and the minds of the people that would you know, hopefully be an uplifting for them. I love it, I love it, I love it. So do, are you working on a project? How much time do you spend? Doing uh, music. I have to spend more time, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. But I am classically trained and I'm trained in RB as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, classically trained. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like you need to be hitting the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we, we, we're working on it. You know, we're working on it. So we're working on a project now called the United Die. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of our companies called United Die Campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the single that we have called United Die. And, um, it's just about using the music but at the same time inspiring with the fashion and the clothing but also a movement that's behind the songs mm -hmm. that can bring um, street life together, that can bring religious um, boundaries together, mm, bring all of us together bring for one common cause. Together. We have to I, I love it, I love it. So where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. You're from right here? Mm -hmm. You you was born here? Grady baby, Grady baby. Grady baby, and that is so rare. Yeah. Do you know how, how often I see people Moving and shaking, uh, really just not from here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's rough. It's rough, but you know, no, I'm definitely from this red clay. <laughs> so, and, um, red clay. We definitely um, ATL pride all day long. So, what would you give someone? What type of advice would you give a young brother that that felt like he was gifted in that music industry? Um, what would you say to him to push him to 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 keep trying? Really find hone in on what's your purpose, what's your lane, and then perfect your craft mm. and work hard. Put in those hours, put in that time. I remember some days I was at the studio for up until 4 o'clock in the morning, mm. got there at 3 p.m. You got to really train and develop your craft. I don't care if it's rapping, singing, whatever type of playing instruments, you have to mm. perfect. Practice, perfect practice makes perfect. Mm. Yeah. Wow, I love it, I love it, I love it. So, uh, uh, are you a family man? A lot of brothers and sisters? I have I have a lot of, like I said, my grandmother had a lot of children, so I have a lot of cousins. I okay. have a lot of uncles, but I have three older sisters. Oh, you the baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, coming out of a household with all women, what are some, some things that you took from that? Um, it learned me, it, it, or it taught me how to value a woman and mm. the power of women. Ooh. Oftentimes I help train men. I also have a training program for women. But I understand the awesome power of women. And I would love for women to understand that they have power. And themselves. value. And yeah. and I would, I, you know, I, I ask a tough question. So if I go too far, just tell me shut up. Okay. okay. All right. So when we talk about being a student of um, Mr. Louis Farrakhan, and I've read a lot of things that he's put out, and I think there's some misconceptions. Um, a lot of women feel like they wouldn't be valued under that doctrine. Wow, that, that is a that's a terrible misconception because I've been taught by the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan that no nation can rise any higher than this woman. Mm -hmm. That the woman carry extreme value. That she's not the woman of man, mm -hmm. but she's the woman of God. And she should be honored, reverenced, and respected in that order. So that's what I was taught from the minister, and that's what I've seen him demonstrate over the years, and that's what he made us as men of his followers respect our women. So where do you think that misconception comes from? I think the broader view of how some people have um, seen Islam in a way. Mm -hmm. and because yeah, I, Isn't that the one that they can have like three wives? That's okay for them? Yeah. 
So oh. I think I think. So the, they valuing all three the same. Well, that's ironically <laughs> speaking, that's what is supposed to happen. Actually, just check. Yeah, but but <laughs> to speak about the nation of Islam in particular, mm -hmm. the nation of Islam, um, because the women are taught to be submissive to their man, sometimes that can be taken as being um, devalued, mm. and that's not. If we check the Bible, the Quran, it also speaks of how men and women should govern themselves and their household. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, hey, if we, we're, we're talking about the Bible, it, it says, "Love your, uh, love your wife like Christ loved the church, and He died for it." Exactly. So if you, it, it, there is no deviation there, and I think a lot, and that's why I ask the tough questions because I think they're myths. I think people on the outside don't really know yeah. what's going on unless you've actually experienced it. And just with all cultures, people come up with um, standards of living that work for them. Mm -hmm. So if it works for them, um, I, one thing I, I tell everyone in the 21st century, people are doing relationships differently. So you just got to figure out where you fit in the equation. And I don't think we as a people can can judge that. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you're you're <clears throat> hearing from God treating people with love and respect and dignity, restoring dignity, um, then I think that you are right in it. I don't think yeah, <laughs> I don't think any of our sisters would tell you that from internal that they're taught or the men are taught to disrespect or disregard mm -hmm. their talents, their beauty, their mind. Actually here in Atlanta, Ms. Farka made and this is not from a broader Islamic mm -hmm. perspective, but he made a woman the head of the ministry oh. in Atlanta, Georgia. And see, these are things, these are the conversations that we need to come together and have because these are the phobias that keep us separated. Yeah, and we're really not that different. No, no, not we're really, all. really, really just not that different. We don't understand that to be a Muslim, especially a follower of Mrs. Sharka, we can't even be Muslim unless we love Jesus. We have to know, we know Jesus and we attempt to follow Jesus. And in that process, because we're always out in the highways and the byways, seeking to save that which is lost. Mm -hmm. So that's the process. And I wouldn't know anything. I wouldn't have a love for Jesus the way I have a love for Jesus if it wasn't for the other most of this far. I don't care about what mean you get to Jesus. Just get there. Just get there. Absolutely. Just get there. So I, 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 I commend. I, I commend. I have a lot of respect. Um, for the nation of Islam because of the unity and the push and pull for community. You guys are definitely out there doing the work and not talking about it, but actually doing it. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. I'm excited to hear this music. When do you have something dropping soon? We, we got something dropping mm -hmm. real, real soon. We're putting it together right now. We're cooking it up. Cooking it up. Pot, you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> We're cooking up some good stuff in the pot right now. So. Okay, so so uh, you gonna say a little something for me? I probably could do a little something. A little something for me, a little something for me. Get, come on, give Since me a little. Since we've been on a real spiritual yeah, tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me time. see. Let me go. Um, I'll sing a, a little gospel song. Mm -hmm. Come back. Come through on the Sunday. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. Yeah. God will do what He said He would do. He will stand by His word. Yes, yes. He will come through. Yeah. God will do what He said He would do. He will stand by His word. He will come through. No weapon. Y'all heard it right here, Mr. Zaria. Amazing voice. I got some goosebumps, man. We got some goosebumps. Man. <laughs> I uh, thank you. I thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. I, I, I'm so proud of the work that you're doing. You. And anytime you want to come through and unleash and drop that music, come on back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Thank you guys. It's Deidre Shante. I'll be right back with a recap. <laughs>